So we're going to just take a really quick look at the mark scheme for Cambridge IGCSE Literature. This one is for Paper 1 Poetry and Prose, but they're all quite similar. So yeah, feel free to use this as a kind of guideline for the other papers as well. The main difference is the papers are on different forms of writing. So you might do an unseen poetry paper or you might do a drama paper, for example. And if you analyse drama, you need to know drama terms and how drama works. If you analyse unseen poetry, you need to be really confident on your poetic terms. But the mark scheme is basically the same. So this applies to all of your literature, IGCSE. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to go through this mark scheme with you just so that you can kind of see how it works. When you look at it, it might be confusing at first. There's a lot of things like, you know, what is a generic marking principle? Ignore all of that. It's just for the examiner. It basically just teaches them how to mark properly. There's some interesting details there if you want to go through it, but you really don't have to understand that to understand the mark scheme. The main thing that you want to understand is um, the assessment objectives and then this thing at the bottom, which is the band descriptor table. So if you're trying to figure out what is the mark scheme, how does it work, how do I apply it to my essay, the only thing you want to understand is this band descriptor table. You have four assessment objectives here, A1, 2, 3 and 4. I'm just going to go through what they mean because for some reason it doesn't say it anywhere <laughs> on this mark scheme. So we'll start with A1. That one is basically your knowledge of the text plus how well you write an essay. You want academic formal writing. If it sounds like how you talk, it's not going to get a very high grade for A1. It needs to sound formal, it needs to sound academic, it needs to use essay words, essay phrases, that kind of thing. A2 is kind of about your themes and your interpretations and your deeper meaning. You want to show insight into the meaning behind the story or the meaning behind what happens in the text. It's really important that you understand the surface meaning first before you go deeper. So make sure you understand literally what is happening. And when you've done that, you want to go beyond the literal meaning into the deep meaning. So yeah, I talk about that more in other lessons and um, feel free to just watch through some of my YouTube videos if you want a bit more help on how to analyse the deeper meaning. A3 is to do with form, structure and language and the way that creates effects or the way that that creates meaning. So you don't just generally talk about the meaning of the, of the text, but you actually specifically talk about this technique that the writer uses and then this detailed effect of how it produces um, this meaning in the reader or this kind of response in the reader. So yeah, as an example, if I choose a simile and I say, you know, like there's a Shakespearean sonnet that starts with a simile which says my mistress's eyes are nothing like the sun, it's very interesting because normally if you have a love poem, you would say, yeah, my <laughs> my fair lady looks like the sun. She's warm and she's glowing and, you know, that kind of thing. All the, the associations of the sun connect to the subject, which is the mistress in this case. Shakespeare twists that because he uses something called a negation. So he says nothing like the sun. So he's just confusing us from the beginning as a reader response. The effect of that is destabilizing. We're confused. Why is he saying that she's not like the sun? Because we would expect a standard love poetry to use a positive, not a negative simile. So that's an example of how to be detailed and sensitive to the effects of meaning. And every time you analyze a technique, you ideally want that level of detail on the technique. You don't want to just say Shakespeare uses a simile, full stop, or Shakespeare uses a simile to compare his mistress to the sun full stop. Those things are not the effect or the meaning, they're just explaining what the technique is. So the more you go into the effects and the reason behind the technique, the higher your mark will go. Really important to be sensitive to the reader response, the effect on the reader, and also the writer's intention. What are they trying to achieve? And then AO4 is your personal engagement. That's your personal response, how you think and feel about the poem or about the text, how it makes you engage with the ideas and the themes and how you uh, develop your own opinions and that type of thing on it. People are very not confident on that, which means that 
again, if you're hiding your personal response or you're not really sure about it, you, you need to do more revision and you just need to keep going with the text until you're so confident that you do have your interpretation and your idea. If you've got a kind of average personal response where you're just like responding a little bit to something but you're not actually kind of having your own interpretation of the whole text, you probably end up around a middle grade. So to get the really top grades, you want to be really confident on your interpretation and why you think what you think about the text. So I'm just going to go through um, the low level, a mid level and a high level just to show you the difference there. Feel free to just kind of read through in your own time and especially say, for example, you're at a level four, you're trying to get to a level five. It's very important to sort of see the precise differences here. For the sake of keeping the video not too long, I'm just going to go kind of, yeah, bottom, middle and top just to show you how that differs. And um, with level one, which we're going to start with, zoom in a little bit here. Ideally with this one, this is kind of what not to do. Pretty much everyone can get beyond a level one if they understand how to write an essay and they have read and studied the poem. So um, yeah, this is more a kind of warning of what not to do at the bottom. So limited textual reference means you're not really quoting, you're just kind of talking about the text but not really using precise references. Limited understanding of the simple or literal meaning means you don't even understand the whole of the literal meaning. You understand a bit of what the poem or what the text is about. So if you understand what it's about properly, you should be beyond a level one already. You maybe understand a bit of the surface meaning of the text, but you don't understand any of the deeper messages or the themes or the ideas behind the story, that kind of thing. And you might be responding a bit, but you're not writing a full essay. Or if you are, it's just loads of random ideas. It's not really structured in a clear essay way. So this is how to avoid the level one. From level two to level four, this is people who start actually understanding how to write essays and they're starting to develop their confidence with essay writing. So level two, three and four, each one you'll notice is a little bit more detailed than the previous one. You're getting a little bit more confident. You're getting a little bit better at those assessment objectives. Then we get to five. So five is thoroughness. You're being detailed. You're picking out multiple techniques in each quote. You're really examining your evidence properly and you're using evidence in a really detailed way. So it's not just one quote per paragraph or anything like that, you're using multiple quotes per paragraph. You might be combining different quotes together to make the same point, you know, with more than one piece of evidence. You understand that some of the deep implications, so you're starting to go into the the depth, the, the ideas behind the story, the themes, the messages, that kind of thing. And you understand that the writer is using language to create effects and you're sensitive to some of those effects. And you make a reasonably developed personal response. You're starting to have your own interpretations and opinions and it's starting to develop. It's not just a random thought about the poem, but it's actually, you know, a consistent answer to the question. The personal response is always how are you answering the question as well. Yeah, so a mid-band is fairly easy to get to if you keep practicing essay writing and you keep getting feedback on how you've written because like you know a 15 or a 16 out of um, 25 that's kind of like a grade six that is achievable for pretty much most people I would say most people understand poems to a level where that is very very achievable and um, yeah and I think everyone should minimum aim for sort of that level really with their essay writing so the level eight, this is much harder. This comes from people who are confident with their essay writing. To, to get these kind of top bands, you have to write and write again and write again and get feedback and write again and just keep going and eventually you get there. And so it's not easy. It, it's not a quick thing. It takes time and effort. Nobody is naturally good at essay writing. No one just gets born and they can write an essay. It's something you learn and it's something you get better at over time and it's a craft or a skill. So it takes a lot of practice and, you know, rewriting and, and also feedback. If you write 10 essays, but no one gives you feedback, your 10th essay will probably be the same as the first one. So you need that kind of teacher or someone giving you 
some sort of guidance in the middle ground to, to kind of guide you up to how to get these top levels. So ideally that's a teacher, but if you don't have a teacher, um, it could be a tutor, if you don't have a teacher or tutor, parent, if you don't have any of those, also a friend that gets really high grades, but you do want some sort of um, yeah feedback on your writing to get the top level. So level eight, the, the absolute best kind of writing, is well selected, the references. It's not just what random quotes can you find, but what precise quotes actually prove your point skillfully. What kind of quotes really illuminate your analysis with flair? You're feeling confident and you're almost even slightly flashy in how you write. It's not just trying to tick all the boxes, but you're actually kind of developing a bit of a style, a bit of a, uh, yeah, a show off <laughs> kind of style with how you're writing. You're so confident, you're not just trying to run through everything in your head anymore. You're just comfortably exploring your essay and as you're doing that you're quoting to to support your points and they all feel quite natural when they're coming out. You're critical with your text so you understand the themes and ideas but you're also critical meaning you can look at different angles and perspective different possible interpretations and you can navigate your own way through that. You can be a bit individualistic with how you interpret things so instead of just giving the basic interpretation of what this means You've got a bit of creativity there. You had a bit of sensitivity and detail. You've got insight into exactly what is the writer trying to do to their particular audience and how is that reflecting in their writing. You have a lot of detail and sensitivity to the effects. So if they use that simile, for example, you know exactly why they use the simile, what the precise meaning is of that simile and how that contributes to the whole purpose of the text itself. And it's also important to do form, structure and language. So you don't want to just do language points, you don't want to just do structure points, you want all three to, to get to that top, top band. Confident on your form, confident on your structure and your language. And finally, you've got a personal response. So you're very confidently giving your opinions and interpretations of the question plus reasons why. But also you're evaluating the question, you're making judgments and you're confident about what is important or what is the most significant details to pick out to properly dialogue with and engage with this question. So it's about being so confident and having so many ideas that you can just select the best ones and then present the best ones in your answer. And the examiner has a feeling like there's a lot more you could say that you just don't have time to say, but you've actually selected the best things that you could have said and you've put them very confidently into the essay. So hopefully that helps you and you feel a bit more kind of sure now about what the mark scheme is and how the different levels reflect and it can be really hard if you're just trying, you know, all the time to get the next level up or a couple more marks or you really want a grade six or you really want a grade nine or that kind of thing and you feel like you're getting nowhere. My main aim with this video was just to kind of help you understand that so hopefully it's gone, you know, <laughs> it's kind of achieved its purpose there. And um, yeah, if you have any questions about this mark scheme, feel free to just pop them in the comments below the video as well. Subscribe to Scribbly if you like these kind of videos and they help you. And uh, we also make full courses on our website scribbly.com which you can take a look at as well. And I think I'll put the links in the comments or the what's it called description <laughs> beneath the video sorry i'm slightly tired today so my brain's gone frazzled but um yeah thank you very much for listening and hopefully you feel a lot more confident on the mark scheme and i'll see you guys soon in the future lesson